I'm going to explain it really flat, fast. It's really easy. And, uh oh, what the? You got a note for me? It's a bad stuff. Yeah. Just the action for you. Let me roll over. Yes. They're floating around. They're floating oh, okay. Put them together. Oh, wait. Yes, I can do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got more of those? Yes, they're coming right to you. Wait, was I asking the same question? Somebody else asking the same question. Emote, can I call on you to scroll down on us? Okay, so while you're eating, before I start doing the curriculum, this is this is our Kodai guide. Okay, instead of saying 16 notes and eight notes and quarter notes, that takes a long time. And so when we're clapping rhythms, when we're learning a piece, when we're introducing a rhythm or a sight reading, start with Kodai. Okay, and Tiri Tiri is 16 that you can clap with. So Tiri Tiri. So each syllable is a note. Does that make sense? And hopefully, sooner rather than later, they'll realize that when there's four notes, there should be four different sounds. Does that make sense? So, teary, teary, T, T is the eighth note. Ta is a quarter note. Ta, dot is a, a dot and quarter note. And then, can you scroll down on that? Sorry. And this is in the Kids Notes curriculum that most of you should have access to. If you don't, just send me an email and I'll add your email to the, the list. Okay, so teary, teary. T, T for eight notes, ta for quarter notes, ta, da, for da, da, quarter, ta, ah, so two beats, ta, ah, okay, for a half note, ta, ah, ah, for a dotted half note, and ta, ah, 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 for a whole note, okay, so when we're clapping, so for example, the rhythms in, um, see a little panda, A major scale, they're teary, teary, T, T, and it coordinates with this, with this rhythm. Is it still clear on how Kodai works? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so when you're clapping, teary, teary, te, te, ta, ta, ah, uh, ta, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. then they know they keep their hands together because it's holding the note. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is up there. If you ever, if you see t, t, or ta, or ta, ah, uh, somewhere in the curriculum, that's what I'm referring to. Go back to the Kodai. Um, who else needs the curriculum? Uh, me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go through Mozart's in 45 minutes. We're going to do 45 minute speed training through each of these. Okay. Um, so yeah. I'm going to have you be my. Okay, is this recording yet? Yes. It is? Yes. Oh, great. Okay, so at the beginning of all the curriculums, I have this front page. And it's basically for new teachers um, ideas for how to establish your routine. Um, can you scroll down a little bit? So as most of you probably know, if there isn't order in the class, nothing is going to be taught. So from the beginning, make sure there's a place for violin, there's a way, there's a, a line to get them, we do a line to do this, we're quiet in the hall, all of these things that work for you in your in your school, you have a uh, a um, procedure and behavior rules and all these things that we talk about but they know where to go when they come in they know where to put their backpack really think about how to set that up so understanding all this most of you probably have a good setup if you don't here's a suggestion for how to do it um, but this needs to be in place before anyone can learn it so can you scroll down we'll start with um, I'm not going to go through every single week Mine. Okay. So, Erica, that's page four to add to the ones that just went out. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. This is mine. Don't listen to me. Sorry. Okay. So, thank you. I'm not going to go through every single week, but it's laid out pretty clearly. 
We have the objective, and it has just kind of bullet points, what you want to cover that week. Um, so Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, what you do, what you want to cover all of those days. Okay? Lesson set segment sorry, has more detail. Okay? Always read that over a couple of times if you're confused about what's going on. It's pretty clear before you come to me. If you've read it through a couple of times and you're still confused, then feel free to ask me what it means. So, the beginning, establish routine, identify the part of the violin, proper care of the violin, holding the setup song. Does any does anyone have any questions about how the setup song works? I have one and, slight question. Yes. What is the what is the note at the end? And tap or raise your arm like the Statue of Liberty. I I, I don't think I was singing the right. Uh, it's my there dominant. There's a music. Oh, that, there's, there. there's um. There's I'm gonna in, in this folder uh -huh. that you all have access to on Drive. If you don't have Drive, you probably should set up a Gmail. I can't. I cannot. I cannot get Drive onto this. It will not work. It is a Microsoft. It hates Google. Can you use I Drive? Cannot, I cannot do anything Can Drive related on Can you use Drive at the school, like at Walnut Creek on Saturday, to turn it off? Sure. Because Drive is going to be that's the easiest way to get it to everyone. I think it has also been sent as an attachment to some emails. Well, mm -hmm. the curriculums are, but like all of the pieces are going to be. I got most of those. Are going to be okay. The pieces, the setup song, it's written out like on the piano, or, <coughs> so you can figure out what it is. Okay. Does okay. anyone not know what the setup song is? Can you do it once? Please? Yes. I know half of it. Oh yeah, this is for video. Can all together? Okay. Feet together, make a V. Take a step and sway like a tree. Tap your high dot. One, two, three. So make sure they have a high dot that divides the string in two. So their fingers get used to up here. Tap your high dot. One, two, three. Raise your arm like the Statue of Liberty. We don't want it out here. We don't want it out in front. We want a V with our arms. One second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This just says flow down slow, but you really need to turn. Make sure the button is facing float down so and you'll look great. Okay, always make sure that the button is stuck to the neck, the jaws and the jaw rest, and the hand should be over the high dot at this point. And then you can slide up and down on the magic X, which I will get to. Okay, so what's really important at the beginning is some of, and some of the words that I use that are a little different are magic X, okay? This is this part of the hand where the bone meets the finger, okay? This is the magic X. You want to draw a magic X every couple of weeks on the kid's hand. This is where they're sliding on the neck. This is where they're shifting. This is where the energy, they can think of the energy coming down because it's the base joint when they put it down on the, on the fingerboard. Magic X is very important. If they're holding their violin, when we start using our left hand like this, it's because the magic X is too low. If like this, the magic X is too high. If it's like this, it's too far back. You want the magic X right in front of the nut and setting on that bone, okay? So the head should be doing the majority of the work if the jaw's not in their jaw rest, which is still an issue after all of this time. The head needs to be doing most of the work, okay? So jaw and jaw rest, and then magic X helps hold it up. Those are the two things that should be helping hold up the violin. Okay, so that's what magic X is. Draw magic X, learn rest position, blah -de blah -de blah tap over high dot, teach setup song, got it. Week two, tapping over high dot. So to remember, they should have a little piece of tape. Tapping over here, we want them comfortable swinging on this to be able to play over their high dot, because we're gonna be playing GDG up here, okay? So, week three, uh, week two, we, we learn GDG. Remember, we're stomping with the foot that's not underneath the violin. GDG, make sure they're moving from their ball and socket joints so they're not locked and um, stomping on the rest. Any questions about GDG? Do you know how GDG works? And all of these pieces, I, you know how I have the really crappy handwritten ones? Oakley has been great and doing it into Sibelius or Finale or whatever. So everyone, by the beginning of next year, will have all of the pieces written out clear, much more clearly and legitimately instead of crappy scans of my handwriting. Um, concept of levels. This is, these are levels. We, and they swing from the ball and socket joint. They don't swing from here 
we need to make sure when we change strings, either with this arm or with this arm, it's happening from the ball and socket joint. So this is how we change levels. This is how we play. Okay? The kids are only going to be using the upper half until, oh, come little children. So just working on this forearm opening until halfway through high school. Okay? Does that make sense? Any questions so far? Okay. Sight reading. There, there are, at the, begin, at the end of probably every other week, suggestions for sight reading. They correspond with um, exercises in essential elements. You don't have to use those exercises, they're just examples of what about their, their act. Okay? You can write your own, but make sure that something is on the board, either you write it or you project it so that they see new music fairly regularly, and I haven't been doing enough of this. So they get more familiar with sight reading as soon as possible, okay? With rhythms, with the open strings, then with the A string, the E string, and then the D string, blah, 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 blah. Okay, week three. Um, it was just a question about the, during the setup song, because when they end up putting it up, they're like facing that way, so I have them during the, uh, raise your hand like such a liberty, I have them turn. So which have mirror. Statue of Liberty should be out of V, not out here. Okay, but but so then they end up like this, and I want them to see what I'm doing right. instead of like holding the That's why the it should be at the V. Everything should be facing forward. The hips should be facing forward. The shoulders should be facing forward. Head is facing forward. Statue of Liberty is here, so they turn and float. They can still see you. They can look down and they can still see you. It shouldn't be over here. It's much more easier to control if the violin is in front of you, and these arms are at a V. This is very hard to control. This creates a lot of back problems. We want right in front. Does that make sense? Especially if they have little arms. The taller they get, the farther out they can, but it's not necessary. If you want to turn, that's fine, but they should, they should be able to see you okay. with, at a, with this at a V. So I always have them make a V. And if they make a V this way, they can also play with perpendicular. If they're out here, they can't be perpendicular. So, okay. Um. So bow tattoo. So then, as soon as they feel they're good with G D G blah 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 blah, we do um we get the bow. Okay. So make sure they're very secure. They can hold the violin with the head without holding it up with their other arm. They're very secure before we get the bow. The bow tattoo is where the bow touches your hand, okay? So it should be on the tip of the um, pad of the thumb, not down here, not on like the very tippy top, but on the, the mm -hmm. back part of the finger. And then right along the middle of the, right above that first or second joint, right in between these two joints, they should just be flopping down. And then on the very tip of the pinky, it should be bent in the pinky house. Okay? If you need a training on how to make the pinky house, contact me. If you don't want to deal with pinky houses, just use the moleskin um, donut hole things. Those are just as good. You just have to replace them more often. Okay? So this is pink. This is a bow tattoo. Okay? So right here, right here, and right here. Okay? If their bows look like this, What's the problem? Finger. That's right. So I call this, they're on their tippy toes, right? You want to lay the finger down. You want them to be, what's this problem? They're too laid down, okay? What's this problem? Yeah, I have a girl that does that every time. I try to tell her, like, it doesn't touch here. It shouldn't touch your hand. Right. So you might want to draw on, you might want to do that bow tattoo and draw. This is where it touches, and then they see, oh, it touches here. Okay. And if they see that line, it's not touching in the right place. It tell, her, right. tell her to hide the tattoo. We want to hide yeah, we want to hide the tattoo. You don't want to know that she got a tattoo. So no. Just <laughs> hide it. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I call them adult words like tattoos, so they think it's cool. Okay. Um, lots of tapping. So at the very beginning, you want them to tap their individual fingers. Tap the first finger. If they can't tap it, it's because they're squeezing. If it's right here, they're not tapping the right place. They need to tap on the bow tattoo. Then you tap the middle fingers, just the middle fingers, not all the fingers together. They need to develop a little bit of independence in their hand. Tap first finger, tap middle fingers, tap pinky in the pinky house. It needs to be bent. They can also tap the thumb, but someone needs to be holding the stick. Okay? So, 
there's the bow. Lots of tapping. When you're doing open strings, make sure you really delineate between, I don't know if that's the right word to say, but between each joint. The shoulder changes the bow string, helps us roll to each bow string. Sorry. The okay. elbow moves the bow by opening and closing, and the wrist is loose, and the hand hangs from the wrist. Those are the three joints, and you'll find they want to use their shoulder to move the bow, then you give stickers to the ones who aren't doing that. Or you do team one, back row. Let's see who can do it better just opening their forearm. Okay, call it forearm, call it opening elbow. Both of those are good. Okay. Karate chop. What? Karate chop. Karate chop, yep. And you can use you can use your own vocabulary and techniques and different exercises, but make sure that they hear at least most of this vocabulary so when we all get together on Saturday and they're on the same page. So teary, it's not tucka tucka stop stop, even though I love that as well. It's teary teary tee tee. At least use that and as well as tucka tucka stop stop. But make sure you use teary teary tee tee for this grasshopper for tee teary tee teary and triple it triple it or chocolate strawberry and then Mississippi is 16, 16, teary, 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 teary. Okay, so use the vocabulary in here. You can also use yours in addendum too, but so we're all on the same page. Does that make sense? Um, the sunflower song, this is something that I, I'd like for general music people to do too, but it kind of introduces the, and this is when they're bored and they're tired. You put the violins down and you do a sunflower song. So it's basically do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So they do a sunflower and bloom at the end. And you can do intervals this way. You can do octave. So they feel the distance between intervals. Perfect fifth. And you can do everything you want. De or, uh, crescendo, diminuendo, piano, forte. Start from the top. And then you can do like... Mi, re, do, through my mind, mi, re, do, so, mm -hmm. fa, fa, mi, whatever you want, whatever they need to get off of their violin, or they're getting tired. Um, so that's what that is. G, E, G, open string blues. So first we start pitting. E, 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 A, A. Most of you know open string blues. It will also be in that folder eventually if you don't. Um, open A string twinkle. That's just teary, teary, T, T on the A string eight times, so the first phrase of twinkle, okay? Um, always circle off. Whenever you're doing something, especially at the beginning, it's mostly up bow circle, to get them used to that ringing sound, right? Also, you can also use the phrase pull and push instead of down and up, because that's actually what you're doing with the string. A down bow, you're actually pulling the string this way, and on an up bow, you're oops, pushing the string to make it ring this way. So feel free to use those concepts as well. Pull and push, like in French, it's tiré and pousse instead of down and up. So pull and push. So they're not pressing down, but moving the string to make it spin. Okay, um, A, E, A with the bow. It's the same thing as pitzing, but um, can you... Scroll that to week eight. You probably are on yours. A E A with the bow is bowing as it comes. This one's very hard for the kids. Mm -hmm. And after they play it, seesaw will seem so easy. And it's hard, and we know it, and they're not going to be perfect at it. But it teaches a lot of good things. That's first the Martelet bow stroke. This bow stroke. But teary, teary, teary. So they do the whole upper half. They roll from the ball and socket joint. So they do open the elbow. Roll from the ball and socket joint. E, A. I think we still want to keep the bow on the string while they stomp. And then up bow. A, roll. E, roll. A, rest. A, 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 roll. E, roll. A. Here we don't circle off because as soon as they get that, then we're going to do the same thing the opposite. And we will confuse them so much, but it will be good for them. Okay? And then at the very end, and you circle off on the up bow. Okay? So that's how AEA with the bow works. And it's going to be written out much better. 
but that'll be on the on Google Drive too. Yes. And at first, we are not doing that with GDG or DA. No. That is only. Only AEA, because they're only going to be playing on the A and the E string until long, long ago. Okay? So only, a, well, except for open string blues. But except for open strings, they're only going to be playing on the A and E string. Okay. So play AEA a million times. Just keep reviewing. Roll, open, close, roll. These are the movements. Um, the three types of bow strokes. This is week nine. The three types of bow strokes that almost all bows um, are, that all bow strokes originate from are, where is it? Can you scroll yes. down on here? Martele, and that's like the T, T. It's the poofed bow stroke, it's stopped, okay? And I come back to this all the time. Whenever I introduce a, a, a piece, I say, what bow stroke are we using for this? Okay, so Martelet. That's A-E-A, -E that's T-T when you're doing tier 2 T-T. Detache. It's smooth, it's small, it's loose. Legato is like the theme of Twinkle. So it's slow and smooth. Okay, so Martele Detache Legato. And I want, and there should be a little accent right there, but sometimes I forget. Okay, so it's, review these all the time, because sometimes they'll be playing something and it won't be together. It's because they're using different bow strokes. Some of them are doing Martele, some of them are doing Legato. So it's very important that they understand that. Okay, moving on. Then open string blues with the bow. It's just the same thing. E, E but with the bow in there. And open string blues will be so easy, you can teach it in five minutes after AEA. Okay? So we'll, when we're doing it with the bow, are we using a martelet string? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Open string, did I not say that? I did that. What was the question? Um, open string blues is martelet. Okay. Hmm. I should add that. I will add that to the online list. Martelet. Good question. Okay, um, same stuff, open string blues. We're going to spend a lot of time on the open strings getting that bow stroke because that's so important. If they don't get it now, they're never going to get it. Okay. So, then, come seesaw. That was a big bite. Yeah. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Um, Right here. So review the sliding up and down on the magic X. Because that's going to be really important. Because that's where the energy comes from to put our fingers down on the fingerboard. Okay? And we need to know the placement of the magic X is very important. If it's too high up the fingerboard, if it's too far back on the fingerboard, it should be right in front of the nut. So make sure they know what the nut is at the very edge of the fingerboard. Okay? So we're going to slide up and down on the Magic X. They should be really used to sliding. I have my students slide up and down on the Magic X all the time. It's introduction to shifting. It shows them how tight or, or not how tight they should be when they're holding on to the neck. And it gets them just flexible. Okay? So Magic X right in front of the nut, thumb on the pad, holding right here. Okay, I have, so a question. Question. Sorry. I have a question about, so when we're doing right now, we're not using fingers down. I'm having my students um, just rest their hand on the shoulder of the violin. That's fine. When they're doing open A string, you can hold it here, or you can have them right here. Okay. We want them over their high dot, though, or up here. We want them up here, not back here, when they're doing open string. Okay? So I sometimes have them just rest like this to focus on loose fingers, or you can have them holding the side. That's fine. I don't really care either way. Whatever you feel more comfortable with. So, Magic X, slide down into first position. And um, I talk about the energy coming from the Magic X. Okay? So from this base joint, when we put down the finger, we don't squeeze the thumb. We just drop the finger from right here. And some, sometimes they have them just hold out their hand and do this. Because this is the same motion. We don't squeeze the thumb to put the finger down. All we're doing is bending from the base joint to bend, okay? I also call these mountain fingers, where they're making a little bit of an, a box, right? We don't want fingers like this. 
We don't want fingers like this. We want the knuckles over the string and making a mountain. This is going to come in handy, especially when we do um, lightly row and they need to tunnel over the string. My violin's on too. Okay, so they have to tunnel over the string. That's only going to happen if they have mountain fingers. So mountain finger, valley finger. And valley fingers come in handy. Hand Come in handy <laughs> when we do introduce vibrato in Copeland. Okay, because this this joint needs to be able to collapse. But until then, no collapsing joints. Mountain fingers. Okay, so head does ninety percent of the work. So remember, review that the head should be holding the violin. It's hard when you don't have a sponge, and then magic X helps. Just five percent. Mountain finger curves strong finger. <coughs> Week thirteen. Okay, so seesaw, I'm just going to play it once. Okay, so this is the first piece in three, and we're using just the one finger. Okay, so we want to master the one finger. So seesaw, one, two, three, two, and it's the legato bow stroke, and they put the one down. What was that verse again? Seesaw, seesaw. I want to sing on my or uh, swing on my seesaw. Right. Just make up words, whatever you want. I like to play on my seesaw. I like to play on my seesaw. Another thing, just a general um, good idea, is to sing everything and clap everything before you play it on the violin, because it's so much easier if they have it in their head to play it. Okay, so we're all, using seesaw when we're practicing on the shoulder, when we're practicing that, that movement, mm -hmm. we sing seesaw. My kids already know That's that. great, yeah. And this is just like we're moving like a seesaw, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at your bow, it moves like a seesaw like this. So you can apply it to lots of things. But before you introduce it, I would always sing it. I perform it for my kids, and then I sing it with them, and then they sing it, have to sing it like 20 times before we even touch the violin. Okay? Or clap, I write out, and they clap. Ta ah ah ta ah and then ta ta ta. Anyway, things like that. Okay. Um, so usually, every there's one week where you introduce something, the second week you master it, and the third week you you review it. Okay. So usually you want to spend even more time reviewing it, but that's kind of how the curriculum is works. So you introduce a piece while you're while you're reviewing another piece. Then the next time you master it, you drill in, in sections, and then you um, review it as you introduce the next piece. Okay, so that's kind of how it goes. Um, introduce, so next comes see a little panda, or see a little monkey. You can decide what the kids like better. We've been usually doing see a little panda. So what we do, we go back to teary, teary, teet, teet. So we introduce first silently without the bow. If you can separate the bow in the left hand, that's great, because then it allows them to focus on technique better. So, silently, open A, see a little panda, put your one down, climbing up the ladder, put the two down, and this is a whole step, introducing whole step and half step. Climbing up so high, two, put the three down, um, pick the yummy bamboo, repeat the three, see a little panda, pick up the three, climbing down the ladder, pick up the two, Climbing down so low to eat the yummy bamboo. And then you do it with the bow. And I'm leaving my fingers down. And then when I lift it up, I release all the tension all the way down to my elbow. Always loosest fingers in the world. We drop them from our bass joint. We pick them up and release all the tension. Okay? Always leave old fingers down. Half step, full step. Um, then after that, we do A major scale, which is the same thing, just we go. But 
with Tiri Tiri Titi. Okay? And the hardest part about this, I think, silent, see on this one, what, what do we do? 16, silent finger placement. So the hardest part, going up is very easy. Roll. Right here, roll both arms. For some reason, they just don't want to roll this arm. It's probably because it's tight. Roll to the A string, plop one, two, one, wait, one, two, three, then you play. So we roll, plop one, two, three, and at first just do it one finger at a time. Okay, just very slowly every time you do it, roll both arms, one, two, three, and then slowly you'll um, plop all together. But right now, do one at a time. Okay, the rest of this kind of teaches itself because we do um, we do A major scale, then we introduce twinkle. I always introduce the form of the piece before introducing the piece. So twinkle form is A, B, A, or bread, cheese, bread, or whatever you want to put. And, we're, and the bread, the cheese, there's two slices of cheese because you played the B line twice. Things like that. So they're thinking about the form of the piece so they don't get lost. They know I'm at the end of the A section, I'm starting the B section. Okay? So we have Tiri Tiri T T. Um, F B B. Did I talk about F B B? Okay, all through this you're gonna see remind them of F B B. Use F B B. That's finger before bow. That means the finger needs to be down or up before the bow moves. If not, it will be the wrong note. So the left hand has to be first before the bow moves. And then as soon as the left hand's there, you don't have to think about it. Then you think about the bow stroke. Does that make sense? So FBB, finger before bow. I talk about that all the time. So Tiri Tiri TT, it says right here on week 20. Um, this rhythm should be played in the upper half with a small amount of bow on the 16th notes with detaché bow stroke and the entire half bow on the 8th notes, martelet bow stroke. So little, little, big, big. Detaché and martelet. Okay, however you want to take that, but it should be smooth. And then um, stop, stop. Then you just go through for the rest of the semester. All you're going to be doing is introducing the rest of the twinkle.